Welcome back to Knowledge 8 Lesson 5. Let's learn about animals of the fresh water habitat. What we need to know. Let's remember that all animals need food, water, and shelter to survive, just like us humans. Here are the words we're listening for today. The first word we want to listen for is amphibious. Amphibious means able to live both in water and on land. An example of this is our frog tank has areas of dry land and water for swimming because frogs are amphibious. Float. Float means to stay on top of the water without sinking. An example, the children watched their toy boats float in the bathtub. Fresh water is related to water that is not salty. An example, every summer our family goes to a fresh water pond to swim. Gills are the parts of the body that fish and other underwater animals use to breathe. An example, when we went to the aquarium, we saw the trout's large gills on the side of its body as it swam by. And our last word today to listen for in our story is waterproof. Waterproof means keeps water out. An example, I wore waterproof gloves to keep my hands dry while moving wood into the back of the truck in the rain. Take a look at our globe here. What part of the globe is blue? That's right, if you said water. And what part of the globe is green or not blue? That's the land. You are correct. Globes show us both land and water make up planet Earth. Let's talk about the different habitats we've already learned about. We've already learned about the Arctic, the Sonoran Desert, the East African Savannah, the Temperate Deciduous Forest, and the Tropical Rainforest. So many habitats. Today, we are going to learn about another habitat, a freshwater habitat. A freshwater habitat is different from the water habitat found in the Arctic Ocean, which is called a saltwater habitat. The water found in oceans is salty and therefore not for drinking. The freshwater is water that does not have very much salt in it. It is often water that people can drink. Here we go. Let's get ready to listen for the different kinds of plants and animals in this fresh water habitat. Hello again. Glad you could join me. I thought that we needed a real change. So I've come off dry land to a place where it's wet all the time. A lake. A lake is an area of water that is surrounded by land. There is a lot of water in this world. In fact, water covers most of the Earth's surface, but only a tiny part of the world's water is fresh water, the kind of water you and I can drink, because it has very little salt in it. Fresh water is found in streams, rivers, lakes, and ponds. The water in these streams, rivers, lakes, and ponds comes from rain and from melting ice and snow. Isn't it amazing to think that the water from the drinking fountain at school or from the faucets in your house all come from rain? I'm here at the water's edge or where the water and the land meet to explore this lake and the plants and animals that call this freshwater habitat home. 
freshwater habitats have many kinds of fish, birds, insects, and other animals. Standing here, I can see an enormous leaf in the big water. Let me climb onto it so we can get a closer look. This is a water lily leaf. A water lily is a plant that lives in water near the edges of ponds and lakes. Plants are important in freshwater habitats because they make oxygen for animals to breathe. Plants are also food for the animals to eat, and they can provide shelter to protect animals from their predators. The leaves of the water lily are very large, round, and green, and they float on the surface of the water. The water lily is well adapted for living in this habitat. Like the kapok trees in the rainforest, the lily's large leaves let it get as much sunlight as it needs for food and energy. Lilies are also food for many animals. Believe it or not, animals like deer, porcupines, beavers, and turtles all eat the leaves, whereas ducks and geese like to eat the roots. Some animals, like fish and frogs, use the lily leaves as hiding places, and the flowers bring bees and other insects. I'm going to float around the edge of the lake on this water lily leaf, but I'm going to have to leave soon because this pesky turtle will not leave my leaf alone. I've pushed out from the edge of the lake a little bit, and already I can see another kind of plant that lives here. It's called a cattail, and it gets its name from the unusual way it looks. Thankfully for me, it doesn't have much to do with real cats. Cattails have long, thin stems with a foot-long furry flower spikes at the top that turn from green in the early summer to brown in the fall. The flower spike feels soft and furry and looks a little like a cat's tail but I think it looks more like a hot dog. Does it look like a cat's tail to you? The plants can reach up to nine feet in height, which lets them get as much sunlight as they need. As with water lilies, some animals use cattails for food and shelter. Muskrats and geese like to eat the roots of the cattail, and the juicy green shoots are a favorite of the moose and the elk. Many kinds of birds make their homes among the cattails. It's very hard to see anything in there because cattails grow so thickly. So it's a good place for birds to build their nests and to lay and hatch their eggs. Predators like snakes and frogs also live among the cattails and search for animals like birds and insects for food. I think I'm going to move on now. As you know, I am not very good with snakes. Come with me beneath the water and let's take a look at what's under there. Here are some nice looking rainbow trout. Fish can only live in water and they breathe underwater using gills on the sides of their bodies. Gills take in oxygen from the water around them. Fish have strong tails that they use for swimming and fins that they use for steering and balance. The rainbow trout is a carnivore. It eats other water animals like insects, other fish, and sometimes shellfish. It even eats some small land animals like mice if it gets the chance. So I'm sure it wouldn't mind a nibble of rat. Rainbow trout like to live in rivers, but some prefer the deeper water of big lakes. I enjoyed exploring beneath the surface of the water, but now I'm going to rest on a lily pad again. While I'm drying off a bit, let me show you a kind of frog called a bullfrog that I can see sitting at the edge of the water. Frogs are amphibious, which means they live both in the water and on the land. Bullfrogs 
are the largest kind of frog found in North America, and they can grow more than a half a foot long and weigh more than a pound. That's a really big frog. The bullfrog gets its name from the loud cow-like noise it makes. I bet Birds and turtles would be pretty surprised to know that a frog can make such a loud sound. Pretty neat, huh? This bullfrog is resting now, but it will come out to hunt when it gets dark. Bullfrogs eat a lot of different kinds of food. They are carnivores, so they eat small fish, snakes, birds, and insects, like this dragonfly that's buzzing around my head. Adult dragonflies are flying insects with long bodies and wings. Dragonflies live around lakes, streams, and other freshwater habitats because they lay their eggs in water. Adult dragonflies eat other insects like mosquitoes, flies, and bees. The dragonfly uses its long wings to hover around in the air where it can catch its food. It has to be very careful because the bullfrog isn't the only one that likes to eat dragonflies. Birds and turtles like to eat them too. The water is getting a little rough out here. Oh, that's why. Here come some birds that like to eat insects. These are a kind of duck called mallards. Ducks are birds and can live both in and out of water. But it's the water where they spend most of their time. Like all birds, ducks, like these mallards, are covered in feathers. Did you know that duck feathers are waterproof? Ducks rub special oil from their tails all over their feathers because oil and water don't mix. Water drips right off the ducks without getting their feathers wet. Ducks float on the surface of the water and have large webbed feet to help them paddle. They dip their heads under the water and use their beaks, which are called bills, to search for food at the bottom of the lake. Mallards eat grasses and seeds from plants and small animals like insects, worms, snails, frogs, and small fish. Well, we've had a good look around this freshwater habitat, but I have to get off this lily leaf before these ducks knock me off. There's another kind of water habitat, and we're going to have a look at it next. I hope you'll join me. Now, if you'll excuse me, it is time for me to take my long trip back to shore. See you next time.